Hello everyone. If you're watching today because you're unfamiliar with the Evolution Elite Fryer, then you're in just the right place. My name is Randall Eby, technical trainer here at Henny Penny Corporation. And in today's episode, we're going to cover what to expect for first time users on the Evolution Elite Fryer. The Evolution Elite Fryer is a very sophisticated fryer, but I'm going to show you just how easy it is to operate. Some of the topics that we're going to cover in today's training are going to be an overview of the fryer and where some items are located and quickly describe what they do. And then also we're going to talk about cooking with the fryer and how easy that process is. Another topic we're going to cover is filtering and mainly geared towards auto filtration because this is what you'll experience throughout the day and using the fryer after you're cooking. And we're going to show with a properly maintained filter pan just how effortless this process can be. The last item we're going to cover is some three quick easy troubleshooting tips to help you keep your unit up and operating. So let's take a look at what some of those items look like. So the first item we're going to start here with is our main power switch. What this does is this gives power to the controls so that we can then turn the controls on with our power switches right here on our control panel. You'll notice how this one is in the off state, but you'll notice that this one is already up to operating temp. So this is what we would come in in the morning and turn that main power switch on to allow us to then be able to turn our control panels on individually. The second item we're going to talk about is the control panel itself. You can see up here in the upper right hand corner that we have these four buttons. You'll also notice that there's little arrow indicators which will have LED lights that will light up as we're using that throughout the day. Now I mentioned these four buttons in the upper right hand corner because they're going to do a couple different things. Number one, they're going to get you into some of the different menus. Like if I press and hold this F button, keep in mind, think of F for filter. If I press and hold that F button, that's going to take me into the filter menu. Now we have P, which is going to stand for program. If I press and hold this program button, that's going to take me into the program menu and allow me to possibly make some changes to some of my product settings or some other uh, examples there. So keep in mind, if you would like some further details on how to make those changes to products, check out our videos that we have on the Henny Penny Help channel, and that will walk you through in much greater detail on how to make those changes. So let's take a look at what going into the filter menu looks like and some of the options we have there. So I'm going to press and hold this F button. And you can see here it's displaying filter menu and the first item that pops up is our express filter or our auto filter is what it's referred to as sometimes as well. Now this is what it's going to do throughout the day as we're cooking inside the fry pot after a certain amount of cook drops. This is what you're going to see most often throughout the day. Now, if we go to our second item here, this is going to be our daily filter. The daily filter has to be done once a day where the filter pan is cleaned and then also the filter pad inside that pan is changed at that point. This is a little more in-depth process, but be sure to check out the videos we have on the channel for that as well on more details for that process. If we go to our third item, we have dispose. Now dispose is what's going to take place at the end of the oil's life and this is where we would take and discard that oil at the end of its life. And this process here by pressing the number one check mark would walk us through that step by step. I'll press my P button to go to the next step and you can see as I mentioned earlier we have these arrows that are now lit up with these LED indicators. So this is what I was referring to as far as getting into the menus, and then also these buttons will navigate us through those menus as well. So now we're to number four, drain to pan. Drain to pan is going to allow us to drain the oil down to the filter pan manually without having to go through a complete filtration process. This can be helpful in terms of if we need to get into the inside of the fry vat for some reason, but we don't need to go through an entire filtration process. With that said, if we go to step number five, the option we have here is to fill from pan. This is going to be in the situation that we have oil in the filter pan and we need to bring that back up, but we don't need to go through an entire filtration process. 
We just simply need to bring that oil back up from the pan. If we go to our next step, that's going to be fill from bib. For some customers, you're going to have bib, which stands for bag in the box, and for other customers, you're going to see JIB, which stands for jib, and that's going to be jug in the box. So this is where we could fill from that reservoir, which we'll get into details in that here in just a few moments. And then the last option we have here is clean out. This is going to be recommended to be done at the end of the oil's life after we've used the discard uh, process and gone through that and discarded the oil and disposed it. This is a good time that we can come in here and select the clean out option and then we can clean the inside of the fry pot with detergent or cleaner and with, it will heat at that point and then we can scrub and clean the inside of that fry pot. So, going back here, this is what we would use for that process. If we go one step further, that takes us to the end of the menu, and then we can go ahead and exit. And we can exit at any time when we're in this menu by just pressing and releasing that number two X button. So that kind of gives us an idea of what these buttons do. Also, if we push this I button for info, that tells us the current temperature of the oil. And if we press it twice, then it tells us the set point of that oil for what we're going to be cooking in. Also, coming down just a little further, you can see we have one and two over here, and then one and two over here. So what this does is that is our timer buttons for starting and stopping our cook cycles. And you can see that we have four of them across there, so we can cook up to four different products at one time. Below that, we have additional numbers down here, and those are going to be for our additional products. So if we want to choose a different product down here than what we have assigned up top, then we would use these buttons down here to choose those and then assign them up here. So that brings me to talking about the filtration process. So we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the components involved with that and what that looks like. So if we open up our doors underneath here, we will have our filter pan here in the bottom, which when this fryer goes in to do a filtration, we're gonna be draining that oil down to this filter pan down here. And then our filter pump, which is on our electric models, is it gonna be in the back of this unit right here, this blue motor. And then for gas models, we're our filter pump motor is going to be right up top here, right above our filter pan. So what that's going to do is when the fryer filters that oil down here into our filter pan, that pump motor is going to kick on and it's going to circulate that oil across that clean filter pad in this filter pan and then eventually it's going to bring it back up to our fry pot so that we can continue filtering. So those are some of the components involved with that filtration process that you're going to run into. So let's talk about auto top off. This is a great feature that this fryer has that will take new fresh oil and bring it up to our fry pot while we're cooking to maintain that level that we want. And it does this automatically throughout the day as we're cooking. So here we have the jib or the bib that we had spoke about earlier. And this is that reservoir, jug in the box or a bag in the box, that the fryer pulls oil from with a separate pump from the filter pump motor, and that's going to be located right here next to our filter pump motor. You can see it's a slightly smaller pump, and what that's going to do is it's going to pull oil from this jib reservoir, which is going to be that clean oil, and it's going to go ahead and automatically top that oil off for you throughout the day inside your fry pot. Something important to note with the jib is this is going to have to be changed out the entire jug in the box here, possibly every couple days or so, depending on volume. This process is easy, and we have this connector right here, which is a quick disconnect, and I'm going to push in on this gray button, and what is important is we want to pull straight backwards when we do, so that we don't break this male connector right here. Because if we take and kind of bend it like so to dis connect it, then we can run the chance of breaking this male connector and have to replace those parts. 
So now that we have it out, I can push on this plastic piece, and you can see how that operates. So when we go back together, we just want to make sure that we line it up straight, and then push in until it snaps and clicks in place, and just give it a little tug to make sure it's fully engaged. The next item we're going to talk about is the data plate and why that's important. And you're probably wondering, why do I need to know about the data plate? Well, this is a crucial piece of information on the fryer that you're going to need to know in the event that you call into our tech support hotline in needing assistance with your fryer. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So you can see here on the inside of our door, right next to our jib container, we have our data plate right here, which is going to have the model number, and then it also has the serial number. These two pieces of information are crucial in needing to know when we're talking and needing help, maybe with a service company or our tech support hotline. Speaking of the tech support hotline, there's a handy sticker right here on the inside of the door that gives the telephone number so that that makes that process easier. Also, when we talked about the filter pan just a moment ago and I talked about the daily filtration process and how that filter pan needs to be cleaned and that filter pad has to be changed, there's a nice sticker right here that shows you the proper assembly and how that goes back together. Also keep in mind, we have a great video on the help channel as well that demonstrates the same process that will help aid you with that as well. So now we've talked about a brief overview of some of the components that you're going to use on a daily basis. So let's take a look at what cooking with the fryer looks like and how easy that is. So here we have our control panel and you can see that we have four pre-programmed products that are displayed in our assigned boxes. Now it's as easy with cooking this with once this is up to temperature, these products will go ahead and display. And as easy as dropping the basket, so we'll go here, and what we would do is take and go ahead and drop that basket with product into it, into our fry vat, and then we would take and start our cook cycle. But wait a second, what if I accidentally hit the wrong timer and I don't want to cook with that product? Well, that's as easy as just pressing and holding that timer button to cancel that product. So now we can go ahead and cook with the proper product that we wanted to, and we'll go ahead and select that. Now let's talk about what it looks like to cook. So when we're cooking in this fry pot, sometimes we will have with certain products an alarm that will ask us to shake the basket, or at the end of the cycle, when we're done cooking, a lot of times we'll wanna shake that grease off. Well, it's important to pull that basket up and shake it, and not shake it in the fry pot because it can damage important sensors inside here. So now we can see that our product is done. So we'll confirm that by pressing that number one check mark and canceling that alert tone. And then we can go ahead and pull our basket back up and hang it on our rack. Now we would be finished cooking with that product. But you might ask yourself, what if I want to cook a different product than what we have displayed up here? What does that process look like? Because we've got a whole bunch of buttons going on here. Well, that's super easy as well. So what we can do is, let's say if we want to cook with product number five, we just press that button. It's going to display what that product is. And then we can choose where we want it to go. And by pressing that button, it automatically started that timer for me. But what if I wanted to what if I wanted to assign that product to a location, but I didn't want to start the timer right now. I just wanted to go ahead and assign it. So what I could do then is press that product and then press and hold this button. And what that did is it assigned it to that location, but it didn't start the, the timer. Now the neat thing is, we can assign any of these products to any one of these four locations. 
And then we can choose any one of these four timers to go ahead and press that timer. And then up top, we can drop our basket accordingly to the either side of the fry pot. And depending on the size of our baskets, we can fit possibly up to four different baskets in here. So this is going to be just how easy it is to cook with the fryer. Basically, we're going to start a timer. We're going to drop, our, we're going to drop a basket, start our timer, go ahead and let that cook through. At the end of that timer, it's going to say that it's done. We're going to confirm that. But let's say we had FI up here in the beginning for fish. What if I wanted to get that product back up here? Well, I'm going to select the product that was for fish, and then I'm going to press and hold it up here so I can assign it back. So now you can see I have FI displayed up here. And it's that easy. We can assign it anywhere we want up here to go ahead and start that. So now that we've talked about what cooking looks like, let's take a look at what the auto filtration process looks like. So at the end of this cook cycle, I have it pre-programmed that it's going to go ahead and ask me to filter now. And this is what you're going to experience throughout the day. The only difference is your fryer is going to become, is going to have a different uh, parameter program there on the amount of cook drops. This one I made to where it's going to filter right after this product. So now that it's done, I'll go ahead and confirm that. And now it's going to ask me to filter now. So let's take a look at what that process looks like. So I mentioned the auto filtration process is a breeze with a properly maintained filter pan. So we'll go ahead and confirm this by pressing that timer button. And it's a number one check mark. Now it's going to ask me to skim the vat. What does skim the vat mean? Well, what that looks like is we are going to take our skimming tool we have here, and basically we are going to skim the top layer of product off of that fry vat and then discard of it. So after we've done so, then we can go ahead and confirm it that we have skimmed the vat. That's important to do so because you'll notice here in a moment when the oil drains down to the filter pan through the drain valve, if we don't skim that vat like we just showed, we can run the chance of that drain valve getting clogged up and causing other problems. So now that I have skimmed it, we'll go ahead and confirm. And now you can see that oil is draining down to our filter pan. And it's also displaying that on our control board. So this is where the auto filtration process comes into play and you can see just how effortless this process is. Now it's going to display washing on the screen and my pump motor here in the back is kicking on to bring that oil back up and run that oil across the top of the or across the bottom of the fry pot there to go ahead and wash that vat. And what it's doing is it's running that oil across the filter pad and cleaning that oil, and then it's draining it back down. And we can see that it's displaying that on the screen. So it's gonna go ahead and continue to do that for a few moments. Now it's gonna close the drain valve, and you can see how it's starting to fill the fryer back up with oil. And then it's also displaying that on the screen, like you see there. So it's going to go ahead and continue this process for just a few minutes so that the oil can continue to fill back up and get it back ready to be cooking in. So we can see what this looks like. And this is what we're going to experience throughout the day after we've cooked so many times in the fry pot is it's going to ask us to filter now. So you can see that it's filling back up. And once it gets to those lines, then the sensors inside the fry pot will detect that it's full at that point. And after a few minutes of detecting that, then it will go ahead and shut the filter pump motor off and it will start heating back up so that we can continue cooking. A good sign that there's no more oil in the filter pan is when you see bubbles in the fry pot like you do right now. So then once it recognizes that, 
after a few moments of pumping bubbles and air into the system because there's no more oil in the pan, it will recognize that like you see on the screen there. It's going to say wait, and then it's going to go back to heating like we see now so that we can get back up and ready to be cooking in our fry pot again. So you can see how easy the automatic filtration process is, like I had mentioned, if we have a clean and well-maintained filter pan and that we're changing that filter pad once a day. So let's take a look at what some easy troubleshooting tips are to keep our units up and operating. Those three easy troubleshooting tips are gonna be number one, inspecting our O-rings, number two, on our filter pan, excuse me, and number two is gonna be in the event that our filter pad becomes clogged and causes our pump motor to overwork and strain, sometimes it can trip that motor and we might have to reset it. So the second item there is gonna be resetting that filter pump motor and we're gonna show you what that process looks like. The third item is gonna be something you could run into from time to time, which would be an E10 high limit error code comes up on our control panel. Now, this generally is due to cleanliness on the inside of the fry pot so if we switch over to the fry pot picture, then we can see on the inside that it should be in this clean state and we don't want to see any black carbon buildup. So that's going to be an important note. So we're going to show you on the different models for gas and electric what it looks like to reset those high limits. So let's start with the resetting the filter pump motor and what that looks like. On gas models, you'll have the filter pump motor up here in the front that you would squeeze in behind here to reset the filter pump motor. But I'm going to show you what it looks like on this electric unit that we have here at the back, and this is going to be at the back of the fryer on your electric models. Now you'll see this red reset button right here that we can press in on to reset it, but the important part is we want to make sure that we give that about 30 minutes to cool down before we try to reset that because if we try to too early, it may not reset. Now, a good indicator to know that this motor has reset is when we push in on it, we should hear and feel it click. It's a pretty audible click and we'll know it. So that's what it's gonna look like in resetting the filter pump motor. And as I had mentioned, on gas models, you'll see that very clearly right up front here and you can reach in to reset that. So let's take a look at what it would look like if we seen an E10 error code pop up on our control panel. Now remember, that stands for high limit failure. And what it's doing is it's, it's a protection device to protect the oil from getting too hot. Now, on the inside of our door here, we have this high limit reset tool that I'm gonna go ahead and pull out. Now this demonstration with this tool is gonna to be for the electric models only. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert this tool into the hub here in the back. So let's take a closer look at that. So we have our hub, which you will see on the control panel when it says reset high limit in hub. These are our elements going down into our fry pot that heat the oil up. So what we're gonna do is again, just like that filter pump motor, we wanna make sure that we give this 30 minutes to cool down before we try to reset this. And then we're gonna take our high limit tool for our electric models that we got on the inside of the door, and we're gonna take at a 45 degree angle, and we're gonna insert that into the hole, and then we're gonna push in on it to reset that high limit. For gas models, it's going to be slightly different. So if you don't see those elements going down into your oil at the back of the fry pot, you likely have a gas model. And for the gas models, you're going to have a black reset switch right here underneath the control panel that you're just simply going to push in and release, and that's going to reset your high limit for you. It's the same thing with those. We want to make sure that we give it 30 minutes to cool down before we try to reset that. Now keep in mind, whichever control panel you're getting the E10 high limit on, is where you're gonna to want to reset that high limit. So if it's on control panel number one, we'll look for that black switch underneath here for gas models, or we'll try to reset it in the hub here in the back with the tool for electric models. So now we're gonna talk about O-rings. 
O-rings are crucial to the success for this auto filtering and our daily filtering. So our O-rings are gonna be right here on our filter pan where it goes into the fryer. So we'll take a closer look here. And this connection point right here, which I'm gonna show you on another filter pan we have, is where those O-rings are gonna be. So if we were to pull this filter pan out, then those O-rings would be exposed. And you can see we have another filter pan behind here. And these are the O-rings that I'm referring to. The important part is that there should always be three of them. For some models, you'll have black O-rings, and then for other models, you'll have a reddish orange O-ring. Be sure to get the correct O-ring when you're ordering those because they do not interchange with the other models. And the other item that we want to bring importance to is these should be replaced every 90 days. They're very inexpensive and very easy to replace. Keep in mind, if you would like a detailed uh, instruction process on that, there's a video for replacing these O-rings on the Henny Penny Help channel that you can use for reference. But we do want to replace these O-rings every 90 days. Okay, so some key takeaways from this training are gonna remember that the it's auto filtration process to work properly, we wanna make sure that we have a properly maintained filter pan and making sure that we change that filter pad at least once a day. Because since these are low oil volume fryers, they require frequent filtration. Also, we talked about resetting the high limit and resetting the filter pump motor in some of those situations. The key thing we wanna remember there is we need to wait 30 minutes for that to cool down before we try and reset those. And then the last item we talked about was our O-rings on the filter pan. The big thing we wanna remember there is those need to be replaced every 90 days. So if you would like to learn more and build on top of this training we've demonstrated today, be sure to check out last month's live stream training on best filtration practices. That's gonna help you excel to the next level in using this piece of equipment. Also, for additional resources, you can check out hennypennyhelp.com and click on the Operations tab, and that's gonna give you some additional equipment info for all your needs. Thanks for joining today, everyone, and have a great day.